Today on Forbes, this startup makes a vaccine for honeybees. Shrimp are next. How do you vaccinate a honeybee? And will beekeepers care enough to do it? Those are the questions Annette Kleiser has been wrestling since founding Dahlin Animal Health in 2018. Five years after launching the startup, the government approved an oral vaccine her team created that's designed for the world's beekeepers to feed to worker bees, which then feed it to their queens in royal jelly. The result, strangely enough, is immunity for the queen's offspring. Now, Kleiser is on a mission to get as many bees vaccinated as she can, helping to safeguard not only the hives, but the crops that they pollinate. She said, quote, We know that the loss of insects is dramatic for this world. We cannot survive on this planet or anywhere else without insects. The Dahlin vaccine defends against a devastating bacterial disease aptly named American Fowl Brood, and Kleiser sees it as a first step toward keeping the roughly 3 million honeybee colonies in the U.S. healthy. It's not the only disease bees can suffer from. About 50% of colonies and millions of bees die each year from a variety of ailments, including a nasty parasite called the Varroa mite, pesticide poisoning, inadequate nutrition, and the stress of traveling around the country to pollinate crops. Those are devastating numbers for beekeepers. Kleiser and her team at Athens, Georgia-based Dahlin Animal Health believe specially designed bee vaccines are an important tool in keeping more bees alive, enabling commercial beekeepers, who may have some 5,000 to 30,000 colonies, to continue bringing them around the country so they can pollinate crops like almonds, blueberries, cucumbers, and apples. As Dahlin was taking its vaccine against American fowl brood through clinical trials, Tom Chi, founder of At One Ventures, invested in a $3.6 million seed round in the summer of 2022. He said, quote, If you have an outbreak of American fowl brood, the spores have such resiliency that the recommended treatment is to kill all the bees and burn all the hives. It's catastrophic if you get it. Kleiser, who has a PhD in neurophysiology from the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich, discovered the research that would lead her to bee vaccines when she was working to help universities transform academic work into businesses. While visiting the University of Helsinki, she met Estonian biologist and zoologist Dalial Freitek, who had an unorthodox idea to inject an inactivated bacteria into a queen to improve the hive's overall resilience to disease. Insects and other invertebrates don't have antibodies like humans and other mammals do, so the traditional way of creating vaccines won't work on them. Kleiser spun Freitag's research out of the university, then they created a vaccine that's mixed into the so-called queen candy for the queen's attendants, who then incorporate it into the royal jelly that is fed to the queen. The result is that the queen's larvae will be primed against the disease when they hatch. Beekeepers are watching closely. Blake Shook, a commercial beekeeper in Leonard, Texas, who was testing out the new vaccine, said, quote, This is really new. I think that's why it's caused a lot of interest and excitement. And national governments are interested too. Kleiser said she is in conversation with a half dozen countries in Asia, South America, and Europe about buying the vaccine to protect their country's bees, but she declined to name which countries. She's raised $14 million in venture funding from At One Ventures and Prime Movers Lab so far. While this is an early stage startup with revenue below $1 million, Kleiser is optimistic she'll be able to land major contracts with both governments and commercial beekeepers in the next year. But there's a major hurdle, convincing beekeepers that the cost of $10 per vaccine is worth it. Shook, the Texas beekeeper, told Forbes, quote, Everyone is interested, but it is expensive, and beekeeping isn't exactly a high-margin business. For full coverage, check out Amy Feldman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.